So my previous Fuck the Uchiha video got some criticism, and I debated it for a moment, and fuck the Uchiha still. So why still fuck the Uchiha? Because, I mean, the criticisms brought up, they were a bit legitimate, right? You know, the Uchiha were once in power, and then they lost that power. They were sharing power with the Senju after a war and founding the village. And if you want to know, read the comments in the previous video. Um, that does raise a couple of issues. Sure, they were in a sense being oppressed. You know, we need to keep them in line, keep them in check. But let's be honest. First and foremost, they still had plenty of power. Right? They were still the Magic Ninja KGB. That cannot be denied. When you say Anbu was watching them, at the same time, they were also a part of Anbu. Like, there was a power sharing going on that was rather legitimate. Well, it was still power sharing, even if the Senju were ruling at the top most things. And politics is full of power shifts. It's full of the changing of powers between parties. And you know what? Sometimes political forces disappear. They vanish. They, they fade into the ethers of the past. You don't hear from the Whigs anymore, do you? Because, well, their movement's done. And Maybe it was the fate of the Uchiha to fade into obscurity. There's already the Hyuga clan, which they don't like to mention. Hey, there's two separate I clans that are also the same, in a sense. Like, they don't like to address that, where, oh, well, there's both the Uchiha and the Hyuga, and they're both the best clan. But let's not put them in the same room together. It's a little side note. I'm complaining about the show for a moment. But even the Hyuga have their slaves, right, though? the sub-clan. They die for the main clan. They're, they have less rights and they're looked down upon. And When you say that things were bad for the Uchiha, that they were being oppressed, you ignore the rest of the entire setting where people are being oppressed so much harder and quite honestly the Uchiha still had it pretty awesome. Look at other villages. The Hidden Mist village for one? Kill everybody you cared about to pass. Well, compared to that, I don't think the Uchiha got too much ground to bitch about. Because if we compare Sand Village, Mist, whatever village you want to pick, they were all hard asses. And the Leaf Village, because of the influence of the Senju, mind you, mind you, let's make that side point real quick. The Senju were the calming, peaceful influence as we look at, you know, the Hokages and their bloodline and their goals for peace and all of that good, happy shit, right? So... You know, let's say the Uchiha got their coup, right? Let's say they got their power and they took charge. What would the Uchiha-led Leaf Village even look like? Well, certainly not the same, because the Uchiha are bloodthirsty. Let's not forget that. The Uchiha were bloodthirsty, power-hungry, and they are embodied by Madara quite nicely. The only exception to this is Itachi, and someone brought that up. Itachi was the only good... Uchiha, really, and that's very true. He's pretty much Magic Jesus, if you want to think about it. He's Ninja Jesus. He died for the sins of the Uchiha and his brother, and comes back from the dead to redeem them again. Think about it. You know, Magic Ninja Jesus. But he was good. Everything he did in his life was lived for the betterment of other people, and what I would consider a very Senju spirit, perhaps. The idea of not being a bloodthirsty monster... I don't know. The idea of not aspiring to just have more power because the fact that he actually developed a relationship not only with Naruto, but with his brother, and then lived an entire life of lies for his brother and protected Naruto, and all of this stuff happened with, Uchi with one Uchiha, Itachi. When we compare this paragon to every other Uchiha, we see their failing so clearly, right? It's like holding up a mirror to them, and you can see everything wrong with them by looking at Itachi. He was trusted by Anbu, was he not? I mean, here's the mission to kill your family. We think you can do it. But look, you know, you can say he was coerced into it. Perhaps in a way he was, but at the same time... They trusted him enough to make that offer. He was a part of Anbu more than the clan. And why do you, by the way, while we're on the subject of Itachi, why do you think he decided it was necessary to kill his clan? He chose that action. And it wasn't, you cannot argue purely from, oh, I have to. No, 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 no. It, he chose that action, and there was a reason for it. Read up, bone up on a little manga a little bit. See what I'm talking about, where he talks about his own clan and their bloodthirst and the evil in them. Hmm? Itachi, 
the sole real good Uchiha deemed the rest of his clan necessary to kill. And I think that says a lot. And if you want to argue that the Uchiha were oppressed somehow in this whole system, enough where a violent coup was warranted, well, I don't think they have any ground to stand on. If they were in Hidden Mist Village, fine, they're probably better. If they were in the hidden village of wherever that the Bone People came from, I don't remember. If yeah, they were in that village, well, they, there's some pretty fucked up shit in the Naruto world going on. And I'd say the Leaf Village is exactly the last place you need to have a violent revolution to fix things. If you ask me, the Uchiha should have just moved out and found another place to overthrow and make it slightly less bloody. And in the end... Fuck the Uchiha still, because you can't take away the core thing that's going on now, which is Madara and Toby both are selfish ingrates, right? When we look at their motivations, selfish, short-sighted, and ungrateful. And then when we look at Sasuke, like, fuck. Like, that guy got handed the world on a platter, his brother lived a life of lies to protect him, and he is working exactly against everything Itachi was trying to achieve. If you put these two people together, compare their ideologies and their goals, Sasuke wants to destroy the leaf for some whatever reason. Oh yeah, because they messed with his brother, right? Except his brother accepted being messed with to preserve the leaf. Do you see the problem here, people, where Sasuke, in honor of his brother, will work to undo everything his brother did? Did. What? He could just walk back into the village to people who love and care for him and pretty much everything would be forgiven instantly and he could help change the world from the inside with Naruto who is now mainlined fucking for Hokage, no doubts. There's an entire system awaiting him as soon as he said, you know, I'm gonna stop this stupid shit and stop throwing a tantrum and fix the world. There's an entire system waiting for him to show up, take the reins, and start doing things. He could just be like, snap, there's a new Uchiha clan because, well, there happens to be a few of them running around right now, and they can move their eyes around and shit and all of that, and he's basically immortal now because of that whole, he has the true manga Kyo. So, I mean, let's look at Madara, he's over a hundred years old, brought back with unlimited power, blah blah blah, right? He's, he's a god at this point, and no one can stand up to him, and he's still fixated on the trap everybody in a stupid illusion plant. These people lack imagination. Even for villains, they suck at being villains. They just lack imagination for a real plot. Like, this guy has the power to just walk up to the continents. Hey, hey everybody, um, see this ten-tail guy down here? They can fuck your life up from a mile or more away, easy, and it's not even a thing? You're mine. Any objections? Oh, you object? Your city's gone. Boom. Gone. Now any objections? He wins. The end. Right there. And if you try to tell me they can all get together and stop him, well, they're already trying, and... Well, how's that working out for him? So I think, with all evidence said, and the perspective given, fuck the Uchiha. Hopefully, Orochimaru is the final villain here.